Okay, so I have to make a confession. Every time I rehearsed the speech, I got to a point where I almost started crying. <laughs> um, what I want to talk to you about moves me a lot. And what moves me is the beauty and the power of people like you and me standing up together to solve a problem that seems impossible to tackle. This is me a couple of years ago. I was deeply unsettled and overwhelmed by global warming. I knew it was there, but it seemed very far away and abstract. And at the same time, I was closely surrounded by its cause. Our global economic system that is based on digging out and burning fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas, which holds responsible for two-thirds of our global carbon emissions. Now, living a normal life in Germany, I was part of the system every day through my consumption, through the food I eat, the travel, like in the picture, the waste I produce. In fact, I felt I was so much involved in it that I didn't even have the right to oppose it. I was global warming, in a way. And no matter what I would do to reduce my personal consumption, it would never be enough to solve the problem. I felt helpless when I thought of it, and so for a long time, I preferred not to think of it too much. Now, I'm sure you're aware that global warming is an increasingly urgent topic. It's proceeding much more rapidly than expected just now. And although we have no time to lose, our political leaders don't seem to take the necessary steps to break free from those fossil fuels. Although there are some pretty good options on the table, like introducing carbon taxes, ending subsidies in the fossil fuel industry that are really high, especially in Germany, or an obligatory carbon footprint label on all the products that we buy. So we actually have a choice, and we foster competition among companies to reduce their emissions. We get none of this. And this is even more confusing and unsettling to me. And I kept asking myself, <laughs> Is there anything I, as an individual, can do to open the door to change? Well, I found there is. Two years ago, I signed a petition at 350.org. It's a US-based NGO fighting climate change by building a grassroots movement. And this movement really excited me. I saw people taking creative public action. They were many. They were doing it together. And they didn't at all seem sad or desperate or aggressive. They looked like they had a lot of fun. <laughs> and I fell in love with that movement. Now, I have children and I have a job. I'm a service design strategist, but at this point, I didn't at all think about how I would be able to come up with the time to put some effort into this. I just knew I wanted to be part of it. I wanted to end my paralysis. On the map of 350.org, I found Fossil Free Berlin, which is a local campaign in the town where I live. It's a city, actually. And when I got to meet these beautiful people, I learned that their goal was to get the city of Berlin to divest its capital reserves from fossil fuels. Now, just like you might be right now, I was asking myself, what is this divestment? I had no idea. But by now, I found out three quite amazing things about it that I want to share with you. Number one, divestment is to pull out our money of the fossil fuel industry. It's basically the opposite of an investment, because the investments that we have are being withdrawn from companies that dig out or burn fossil fuels. Those are companies like Shell, EVE, BP, ExxonMobil, Total, you get the picture. 
It's basically a boycott, simple as that. Now you may say, that sounds like a good idea, but I don't even own shares in these companies. I also thought that I didn't. And then I had to find out that I did. Not because I ever took that decision and thought it was a really good idea, but because the, the ones who received my money did. Public administration, my bank, my insurances, my pension fund. No matter who I give my money to, some of it goes to the fossil fuel industry in form of loans, shares, project finance, bonds. Today, there's almost no exception. <clears throat> now, I realize this makes me a stakeholder. And as a stakeholder, I can interfere. I can tell them that I don't want this. Chances are better if I don't do it on my own, but together with other people who are in the same position. And this is how the divestment movement works. Individuals get together and ask their institu institutions to divest from fossil fuels. It's something very simple and obvious that we're asking for. It's to divest from those companies that are at the root of the system that we need to change. And it's usually not that much. It's just between 5 and 10% of all investments that need to be moved. It's a totally realistic goal, and we can reach it. So now you may say, well, if it's not that much money, who cares? And even worse, if those institutions divest, somebody else is going to buy their shares, right? It's true. The fossil fuel industry is very big, and there will always be investors who don't care. So will the fossil fuel industry even take any notice of what's going on? How can investment actually change anything? Well, this brings us to the second thing that I learned about divestment. It's not about money. But it could cause something else. It can cause moral bankruptcy. And you can see an example for more bankruptcy if you look at the end of the South African apartheid regime. Now, in the 80s, students in the US succeeded in asking their universities to divest from companies that were doing business with the South African apartheid regime. And those companies divested, those universities divesting and talking in public about why they had done so led to other institutions following. Faith organizations, unions, cities, investment funds. It spread like a virus. And this public dissociation was, according to Nelson Mandela, a crucial factor in ending apartheid. And Willem de Klerk, the last president of the apartheid regime, can be quoted, when the divestment movement began, I knew that apartheid had to end. This is a political leader acknowledging that once people are ready to move their money in order to make a moral statement, they will have their way. Think about the power that gives to us. And there's yet a third thing I came to understand about divestment. It's a precondition for change. Remember I said earlier that we don't see the necessary political steps? Well, here's why. We, as a society, currently depend on the profits of the fossil fuel industry because we're invested in them everywhere. Our well-being depends on their dirty business. Currently, as it is, if they fall, we lose our money. On the other hand, we know if they remain profitable, the planet will be boiled. Which one is worse? You're going to understand that ending this dependency is a precondition for taking the necessary steps to stop global warming for 
rebuilding our economy and ch changing it into one that is based on renewables. Now, divestment is not going to solve all the problems immediately, but it is the first necessary step towards solving them. And the virus is spreading. This is what this powerful and wonderful movement has been achieving in the past 18 months. All of these institutions have decided to divest. It started with a lot of universities in the US, Yale being the latest example. Then there was the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund. They decided to, decide, to divest their 900 billion portfolio last year. There were over 60 cities, such as Seattle, Oslo, Copenhagen, and Münster being the first German city to take that decision last year, where responsible said it was surprisingly easy and quickly done. And then other huge institutions followed. The Rockefeller Foundation, the Guardian Media Group, the British Medical Association, a lot of faith organizations and the Church of Scotland, and even the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who will not call it divestment, but that's really what they do. So the entire sum adds up to 3.4 trillion US dollars that are committed for divestment right now. Now, what about my hometown, Berlin, and the campaign I'm in? We're not on the list yet, but we had a meeting with the senator for finance last week. And he said that he began looking into divestment just shortly after we launched our campaign. And he expects it to be done by the end of this year. We are 10 people in a 4 million town. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, getting him to talk to us, obviously, was a lot of work in the past year. And I did most of that work at nights and on weekends because of my family and my job filling my days. It was very exhausting, but I couldn't stop. It was also a challenge for the people around me, and my husband at times, frankly, almost went nuts. Thank God he's here today. <laughs> um, so over the last winter, I decided to take a climate sabbatical. I was lucky I could do that. I wanted more time during the day for the Berlin campaign, and also, I wanted to do something else. I wanted to address my own pension fund, the Versorgungswerk der Presse, um, and make them divest. And I sent a letter to them last fall, and shortly after, they replied, saying that they had decided to divest partly from coal. Sometimes it can be that simple. It's, it was just one letter, and, of course, the threat to tell the entire German press about it. But, okay. <laughs> um, it, but it's just the first step. It's really too little. I want my pension to be clean, and that's why I want them to go all the way. And so I built this website, and I'm mobilizing journalists and other supporters to send divestment letters to the Versorgungswerk der Presse through this website. I hope you check it out, and if you think it's a good idea, contribute. Now, there's really no need to go all the way crazy over divestment like I did. <laughs> you can actually get things going with fairly little effort. And that's why I want to encourage you to take action. Look around you. The person next to you might be a member to the same pension fund or a customer to the same bank as you. You could get together and start by writing a letter if you're not sure how to do it, send me an email. We'll get it done. <laughs> now, I've lived in Hamburg, and I know that it's a wealthy city. If you have money, make sure it does the right thing. And then go and tell everyone that you did and why. 
If we let our financial institutions know that we do not want to benefit from global warming anymore, we will set in motion a change process. I guarantee, the more we are, the better. And my dream is that one day, when they're looking back, the fossil fuel industry will be quoted this. When the divestment movement began, we know that fossil fuels had to end. <laughs> Thank you.